morning, everybody. Together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Father Fred Fink, and uh, many years ago, actually we just figured out in the sacristy it was 13 years ago when I left here. So if you're uh, Back from then, uh, we uh, renew acquaintances. Otherwise, hello. <laughs> um, as we gather on this feast of Corpus Christi, we begin, as always, by acknowledging our need for God's mercy in our lives and to uh, express that gratefully as we say, Lord Jesus, you blessed, broke, and shared bread with the hungry crowd in today's gospel. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your simple offering was abundant and sustained them. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you continue to sustain us in bread that is blessed, broken, and shared. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and pe peace to people of goodwill. We believe you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, 
heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Father, we wish to remember Jesus by offering this memorial of his life and death. He does more than become a good memory for us. He is present and unites us to himself. May we offer his sacrifice of praise, we who take the cup he offers, we who eat the bread he breaks. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Two are on the screen. My soul is thirsting. That's our responsorial psalm. Please sing out on the refrain. We'll be singing along with you.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. And then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of 50. So they did so and made them all sit down. And then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends in Christ, of course, one of the things that happens when you come back like this is you notice things that are different than when you left, or even the last time you were here. Uh, one of the things I noticed was that Father has uh, his homily for today all printed and ready for you to take on your way. I don't think it was because he didn't trust me. Uh, <laughs> It was uh, because he wanted to uh, share some thoughts about this feast of the body and blood of Christ with you. Not only that, but I noticed in the bulletin today, he has an insert. 
and I not only call your attention to it, but I encourage you to read it because it's uh, really a wonderful history, not only of this feast of Corpus Christi, but it's a wonderful history of the Eucharist and how things have developed and evolved over the over these 2,000 years. And I think it not only will be good for each of us individually, I think it'll be good for a conversation with others around the table today or at some point to share with your children, grandchildren, parents, God, you know, the whole works. So just a little advertising for him. It's really worth it, though. I admire it. Feast of Corpus Christi. Three things I would share with you about it. Each of them, I would connect with a story. Those of you who know me know I like stories. And I like stories because I think they give us an insight into truth that sometimes words just don't quite convey. Um, the first uh, thought about the Eucharist is that it gathers us. Now you may say, well, that's obvious. But it gathers, it gathers us in all our differences, in all the divisiveness that is part of our lives, especially today. It gathers us here around this table, this altar, as people who are equal before God equally loved by God. I, I would share a story that I think brings this out. Uh, it, it begins with a little ditty. The little, it, it's about eating peas with a knife. Now, I, I may have shared this story years ago. I'm not sure. I, never, I don't keep track of my stories. But I always figure a good story is like good music. It just doesn't get old. And uh, the little ditty goes, I eat my peas with honey. I've done it all my life. They do taste kind of funny, but it keeps them on the knife. <laughs> uh, well, a priest, uh, you know, tells this story about his aunt. He said his aunt ate peas with a knife. And he asked her one time, why do you do that? And she, she said, well, she had grown up during the Depression, and they didn't have a lot in their home. They had a vegetable garden. But uh, strangers passing through town would always be welcome at their table. And she said one day her dad brought home uh, this man. His name was Henry. And uh, at table that evening, they kind of waited for Henry to begin. And uh, Henry grabbed his knife and dug into his peas. Well, they were kind of astonished, as you could imagine, children especially, he looked with mouths open watching this, and until the, the dad uh, giving his, gave his children that silencing look, you know, and uh, picked up his own knife and began to eat the peas. And pretty soon his wife and children did the same. Um, and the aunt said, that day I saw a concrete example of accepting people, of treating people with dignity, even if they were different. And so she said, I just wanted to keep up the practice in order to pass down this message to my children and grandchildren. And that's why she ate peas with her knife. Um, so the Eucharist gathers us, gathers us in an accepting, accepting environment, accepting the differences we have, uh, overcoming, in a way, the divisiveness that can otherwise be there. You know. Secondly, the Eucharist affirms us. It affirms who we are. 
that we are beloved by God. I don't know if you remember, those of you who are, uh, have enough gray hair, maybe remember Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore was a comedian, a movie actor. He was on TV, I remember, when I was younger. And uh, what we may not remember about him is that he was born with what they called then a club foot. One leg was longer than the other. And the, the kids used to tease him because of that, and they called him Hop Along. Well, Dudley said that uh, he felt unworthy of anything in his, in his young life, and that his, ki his, his parents felt, must have felt guilty about his, what they saw as his defect. And so Dudley felt that he had done something wrong. Um, he said his home just lacked love. But when he was about six or seven, he spent a lot of time in the hospital because of his leg. And he said one night, a nurse, he remembered his name, his name Pat, came into his room and gave him a good night kiss. And he said, 40 years later, I, I still remember it and I almost spin when I think about it. Because that kiss was probably the first taste of real unqualified, uncomplicated affection that he had ever had. He said his entire life was spent in the shadow of that affection. Um, he tried to deal with his need for acceptance by making people laugh. So the Eucharist is like that. It's God's way of affirming us, of saying we are beloved by God, of saying we are unique in God's eyes, that we are important, each of us, with whatever disabilities we carry physical, spiritual, emotional, whatever. We are loved by God. The Eucharist says that again to us. And finally, uh, I think the Eucharist uh, challenges us. It challenges us to be who we are called to be, to be who we eat in the Eucharist. There is that story that came out of the Second World War about the city in France, this little village called Le Chambeau. Maybe some of you have seen this, that story. It's been on TV occasionally. And Le Chambeau was this little city in France that was uh, populated uh, by Protestant Huguenots, they were called. They were kind of a, a group that experienced a lot of persecution themselves. And during this Second World War, the Jewish people were fleeing Nazi persecution, and they found refuge in that city. And what was interesting is it wasn't just an individual family or a heroic individual that accepted the Jewish uh, people fleeing, but it was the whole community, the whole town. They just decided, the local leaders decided they could not stand aside and allow innocent people to be rounded up and carried away to death. Um, they recall the Law of Moses, which talked about cities of refuge. And they saw themselves being a city of refuge, a place where a person accused of, uh, uh, accused of a crime could be safe until at least a fair trial was, was, was present. Uh, and, and how much more would it be a place of safety for people who are entirely innocent, could be protected? You know. The whole village was organized to receive refugee Jewish people. They forged papers for them and, and they hid them away in families and farms. And, 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 and interesting too, they, they didn't deny that they uh, were sheltering Jews. 
they simply would not say who was a Jew and who was not. <laughs> and some of them were caught, of course, and deported, some were killed, all of that. But 4,000 people were saved because of their actions. The story, I think, tells of the heroic work of caring for those who are fleeing violence, who are fleeing life-threatening situations. And what do we do with them? The, 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 the people of La Chambeau believed that God called them to give what they had and to trust that God would make it sufficient. Other people in, in, the, in the world at that time, in their world at that time, had a different view. They were many good people. But they said, in effect, well, it's not our problem. Send them away. They can go to farms or villages somewhere else. Someone else will take care of them. Someone else will see to their welfare. It's always a challenge for us. In the gospel today, it says Jesus and his friends and the people gathered in a lonely place, a place obviously that isn't set for feeding 5,000 people. Uh, it's like another lonely place, a remote French village with few material resources. In both places, a miracle of some kind took place. As God said to the people of La Chambeau, he said to the disciples 2,000 years earlier, give them something to eat yourselves. And instead of protesting that they, that they didn't have much for themselves, much less for others, they simply gave what they had. And as the gospel says, it was sufficient. And I think the Eucharist always challenges us that way. So, what do we expect when we come to, to Mass on Sunday like this? I would suggest three things you might expect, three things that you might at least kind of have in mind. First of all, that we are gathering with a lot of different people. Let it be a time when the, decis the, 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 the uh, differences fall apart, are left behind, that we hear again Jesus' call to oneness, that we hear again his inv invitation to the 5,000 of all kinds and manners that he was willing to feed, wanted to feed. And we not only gather like that, but, but here expect to be affirmed expect, anticipate, look forward to, invite God's love to be experienced once more in my life. That in spite of all the unloving things about us, God says, I love you. You are my beloved. You are important to me. Never forget. And finally, we come expecting to be challenged, to be challenged to be who we are called to be, Christ in our world. You know. We're gathered here in this out-of-the-way place, in a, in a sense, a place that is kind of a respite from the secular world. Its ways are not always our ways. We want to redeem it by our love. We are to be a light for the world. As we identify with and announce the words and actions that we will hear shortly at this table, this is my body given for you.
With Christians throughout the world, let us pray then our prayer of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We share in all the hungers of the world, and so we pray for all who long to be fed. That our gathering at this table of word and sacrament will enable us to open our doors, homes, and our lives to all people. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer that each of us may come to recognize the unifying power of Jesus in our lives and through the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, hear our that the hungry may know our generosity through food shelves and our other charitable contributions, we pray. Lord, hear our that as a community of believers, we may reach out to those who are not able to join us at this table the homebound, the seeker, and the lost, we pray. That the gift of summer may provide a renewed spirit of love and renewal for all families, we pray. For Sevy Lee Meyer and her parents, Josh and Lindsay Meyer, who celebrated baptism last weekend, that they may grow as a family of faith, we pray that those who have died may find eternal peace in the promise of the resurrection. And for the intentions written in our book of prayer requests, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Nourishing God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your beloved Son. Help us remember that receiving this sacred food calls us to actively reach out in generous love to all who are hungry in any way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the gifts will be Bread for the World, number 344 in the songbook, 344.
Jesus Christ, you are the wine of peace, poured into hearts once broken and where dryness leaves, where we are tired and weary, you are waiting there to be the way which beckons us beyond this Sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice from your hands. Praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. We are Christ's body, and we offer what we are. May these gifts of bread and wine, offered in faith, received in faith, unite us to him who pleases the Father, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. And so with angels and archangels, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, 
he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, gathered with his disciples at table. There he gave thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks, and then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be offered for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and with the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with all the saints and our loved ones, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. As we approach the Supper of the Lord, 
let us pray the table prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those. <coughs> Temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beg you, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our day. And in your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And let us share with one another a sign of that peace. This is Jesus who gathers us and affirms us and challenges us. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we to be called to his table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. song during communion will be I am the bread of life. Number 363 in the song, 363.
Let us pray. Lord, give us the continuing gift of Jesus, present through his spirit, present in our love and in our pain. May this feast of his body and blood remind us that all life is your gift, and in Christ it is enriched beyond all measure. Through him we pray, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for coming out to celebrate with us on this beautiful Sunday morning in the summer. Our song for going forth is One Lord, number 649 in the songbook 649. And let's join our voices together to conclude our celebration.